This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This recording is by Mark Smith of Simpsonville, South Carolina. The Swiss Family Robinson by Johann David Wyss Chapter 6 As soon as day broke, I mounted on deck to look through the telescope. I saw my wife looking towards us, and the flag which denoted their safety floating in the breeze. Satisfied on this important point, we enjoyed our breakfast of biscuit, ham, and wine, and then turned our thoughts to the means of saving our cattle. Even if we could contrive a raft, we could never get all the animals to remain still on it. We might venture the huge sow in the water, but the rest of the animals we found would not be able to swim to shore. At last Fritz suggested the swimming apparatus. We passed two hours in constructing them. For the cow and ass it was necessary to have an empty cask on each side, well bound in strong sailcloth, fastened by leather thongs over the back and under each animal. For the rest we merely tied a piece of cork under their bodies, the sow only being unruly and giving us much trouble. We then fastened a cord to the horns or neck of each animal, with a slip of wood at the end for a convenient handle. Luckily the waves had broken away part of the ship, and left the opening wide enough for the passage of our troop. We first launched the ass into the water, by a sudden push. He swam away after the first plunge, very gracefully. The cow, sheep, and goats followed quickly after. The sow was furious, and soon broke loose from us all, but fortunately reached the shore long before the rest. We now embarked, fastening all the slips of wood to the stern of the boat, thus drawing our train after us, and the wind filling our sail carried us smoothly towards the shore. Fritz exulted in his plan, as we certainly could never have rowed our boat loaded as we were. I once more took out my telescope, and was remarking that our party on shore seemed making ready for some excursion, when a loud cry from Fritz filled me with terror. "'We are lost! We are lost! See, what a monstrous fish!' Though pale with alarm, the bold boy had seized his gun, and encouraged by my directions, he fired two balls into the head of the monster, as it was preparing to dart on the sheep. It immediately made its escape, leaving a long red track to prove it was severely wounded. Being freed from our enemy, I now resumed the rudder, and we lowered the sail and rowed to shore. The animals, as soon as the water became low enough, walked out at their own discretion, after we had relieved them from their swimming girdles. We then secured our boat as before, and landed ourselves, anxiously looking round for our friends. We had not long to wait. They came joyfully to greet us, and after our first burst of pleasure, we sat down to tell our adventures in a regular form. My wife was overjoyed to see herself surrounded by these valuable animals, and especially pleased that her son Fritz had suggested so many useful plans. We next proceeded to disembark all our treasures. I noticed that Jack wore a belt of yellow skin, in which were placed a pair of pistols, and inquired where he had got his brigand costume. "'I manufactured it myself,' said he. "'And this is not all. Look at the dogs!' The dogs wore each a collar of the same skin as his belt, bristling with long nails, the points outwards, a formidable defence. "'It is my own invention,' said he. Only Mama helped me in the sewing. "'But where did you get the leather, the needle, and thread?' inquired I. "'Fritz's jackal supplied the skin,' said my wife, "'and my wonderful bag the rest. There is still more to come from it. Only say what you want.' Fritz evidently felt a little vexation at his brother's unceremonious appropriation of the skin of the jackal, which displayed itself in the tone in which he exclaimed, holding his nose, "'Keep at a distance, Mr. Skinner. You carry an intolerable smell about with you.' I gave him a gentle hint of his duty in the position of eldest son, and he soon recovered his good humour. However, as the body as well as the skin of the jackal was becoming offensive, 
they united in dragging it down to the sea, while Jack placed his belt in the sun to dry. As I saw no preparation for supper, I told Fritz to bring the ham, and to the astonishment and joy of all, he returned with a fine Westphalian ham, which we had cut into in the morning. "'I will tell you,' said my wife, "'why we have no supper prepared, but first I will make you an omelette and she produced from a basket a dozen turtles' eggs. "'You see,' said Ernest, "'they have all the characteristics of those Robinson Crusoe had in his island. They are white balls, the skin of which resembles moistened parchment.' My wife promised to relate the history of the discovery after supper, and set about preparing her ham and omelette, while Fritz and I proceeded in unloading our cargo, assisted by the useful ass. Supper was now ready. A tablecloth was laid over the butter cask, and spread with the plates and spoons from the ship. The ham was in the middle, and the omelette and cheese at each end, and we made a good meal, surrounded by our subjects, the dogs, the fowls, the pigeons, the sheep, and the goats, waiting for our notice. The geese and ducks were more independent, remaining in their marsh, where they lived in plenty on the small crabs which abounded there. After supper I sent Fritz for a bottle of the captain's canary wine, and then requested my wife to give us her recital. End of chapter 6